Disney's Aladdin, the princess who didn't want to marry. As she sat by the fountain in the palace courtyard, Princess Jasmine giggled at her pet tiger, Raja. The tiger had not been impressed with the latest prince to ask for Jasmine's hand in marriage, so he helped scare him away. They were both glad to be rid of the selfish suitor, one of many unworthy princess, princes who visited recently. Jasmine's father, the Sultan of Agrabah, was not amused. Dearest, you've got to stop rejecting every suitor who comes to call, he told his daughter. The law says you must be married to a prince by your next birthday. You've only got three more days. But Jasmine thought the law was unfair. Father, I hate being forced into this, she said. If I do marry, I want it to be for love. Lately, she found herself wish wishing she wasn't a princess at all. She had never ever been allowed to go outside the palace walls. She felt trapped. That night, the princess decided to run away. She put on a disguise and began to climb over the palace wall. Raja tugged on her dress. He didn't want her to leave. Jasmine knew she would miss her friend, but she had to see what else was out there. I'm sorry, Raja, but I can't stay here and have my life live for me, she explained. Raja nodded and slid his head under Jasmine's foot to give her a boost over the wall. The next morning, Jasmine arrived at the marketplace. She looked around excitedly, for she had never seen anything like it. People were selling everything from pots and necklaces to fish and figs. As she walked, she came upon a little boy who looked like he hadn't eaten in a while. Oh, you must be hungry, Jasmine said. The boy looked up at her eagerly. She took an apple from a nearby stand and handed it to the poor child. You better be able to pay for that, the apple seller said. Pay? Jasmine said with surprise. She never needed to pay for anything at the palace. No one steals from my cart, the vendor bellowed and grabbed her angrily. Jasmine was frightened and didn't know what to do. Luckily, a handsome stranger came to her rescue. Oh, thank you, kind sir, the young man said to the apple seller. I'm glad you found her. I've been looking all over. Jasmine looked puzzled. What are you doing? She whispered to the young man. She noticed he had a pet monkey with him. Just play along, he replied. You know this girl? The seller asked him. Sadly, yes. She is my sister, he replied. She's a little crazy. She thinks the monkey is Sultan. Jasmine knelt down. Oh, why Sultan, she said to the monkey. How may I serve you? Tragic, isn't it? The young man said as Jasmine pretended to be crazy. Now come along, sis. Time to go see the doctor. They started to leave. It looked like they would escape until the monkey bowed goodbye. And a bunch of stolen apples tumbled from his vest. Come back here, you little thieves. The fruit seller yelled. The trio ran as quickly as they could and finally reached the young man's rooftop home. They were safe, for now. Jasmine looked around. The stranger's home was simple, but at least it was his own. No one told him what to do. Jasmine couldn't imagine having so much freedom. 
At the same time, the young man was looking long, longingly at the palace in the distance. It would be a wonder. It would be wonderful to live there. He thought to have enough money so he wouldn't have to worry about his next meal. Sometimes I just feel so trapped. They both said. Surprised, they looked at each other. Jasmine suddenly felt that she had a lot in common with this handsome stranger. But just then, angry palace guards burst in. Jasmine looked around. There was no escape. Do you trust me? Asked the young man, holding out his hand to her. She looked into his brown eyes and said, Yes. Then jump, he cried. Jasmine took his hand and they leaped off the roof. They landed safely in a pile of grain, then raced through the marketplace, right into another set of guards. The head guard seized the young man. It's the dungeon for you, boy, he declared. Unhand him, demanded Jasmine, pulling down her hood and revealing herself as the princess. The guards were shocked to see her outside the palace walls. Do as I command, she ordered. Release him. I would, princess, except my orders come from Jafar, the guard replied. You'll have to take it up with him. Jasmine crossed her arms and narrowed her eyes. Believe me, I will, she said. Back at the palace, the princess confronted Jafar, one of her father's advisors. The evil man told her that the stranger had been sentenced to death and killed. I am exceedingly sorry, princess, Jafar lied. Jasmine glared at Jafar. How could you? she said, and ran out. She went to see her tiger friend. It's all my fault, Raja, she said, sobbing. I didn't even know his name. The next day on the streets of Agrabah, there was a magnificent parade. Men playing drums marched down the street, followed by women dancing with scarves. All of the townspeople stopped what they were doing to watch. Inside the palace, the sultan heard the music. He went to his balcony and was delighted by what he saw below. Oh, Jafar, he called. You must come and see this. Reluctantly, Jafar joined the sultan. Trumpets blared and banners waved as the parade made its way to the palace. But most impressive was Prince Ali, who sat at the top of an enormous elephant, throwing gold coins into the crowd. He looked attractive, regal, and extremely smug. Princess Jasmine, who was still upset about the death of her young man from the market, watched from her balcony. She shook her head in disgust at this latest suitor, did he think he could buy her hand in marriage? Nevertheless, the sultan welcomed Prince Ali into the palace. Your majesty, I have journeyed from afar to seek your daughter's hand, said Prince Ali after flying in on a magic carpet. Prince Ali Ababwa, said the sultan, I'm delighted to meet you. But Jafar had his own sneaky plan. He wanted to marry the princess himself so that some day he would rule the kingdom. He whispered to the sultan, What makes him think he's worthy of the princess? Confidently, Prince Ali replied, Just let her meet me. I will win your daughter. But Jasmine had been listening and was very upset. How dare you! All of you, standing around deciding my future? She cried. I am not a prize to be won. She turned and stormed off. But Prince Ali would not give up. That evening he appeared on Jasmine's balcony and apologized. Raja growled protectively. 
and was about to chase him away. But Jasmine thought the prince looked familiar. When she stepped closer, he offered to take her on a magic carpet ride. We could get out of the palace, see the world, Prince Ali offered. Jasmine hesitated. Is it safe? she asked, looking at the carpet. Prince Ali leaned forward, offering his hand. Do you trust him? he asked. Jasmine thought he might be the young man from the marketplace. Maybe he hadn't been killed after all. She gave him her hand and climbed aboard the magic carpet. Jasmine and Prince Ali flew over the streets and rooftops of Agrabah. They held hands and Jasmine felt happier than she ever had. Jasmine got the prince to admit he was the young man from the marketplace, but he didn't tell her everything because he didn't think she would like him if she knew the truth. His real name was Aladdin. After escaping from the dungeon, he found a magic lamp. The genie inside had given him, given him three wishes. Aladdin, who had fallen in love with Jasmine, had used one of them to become a prince so he could marry her. I sometimes dress as a commoner to escape the pressures of palace life, he lied. But I really am a prince. Why didn't you just tell me? asked Jasmine. Well, you know, uh, royalty going out into the city in disguise. It sounds a little strange. Don't you think? He said. Jasmine looked down. Not that strange, she said quietly. Soon after they returned from the romantic magic carpet ride, Jafar discovered Prince Ali's secret and revealed his true identity. Then Jafar tried to seize power, but Alasman and Jasmine fought him bravely and won. Together they had saved the kingdom. After the battle, Aladdin took Jasmine ha Jasmine's hand in his. I'm sorry I lied to you about being a prince, he said humbly. Jasmine held his hand. She hadn't fallen in love with him because she thought he was a prince. She loved him for who he was inside. The prince had finally found someone she wanted to marry. Her father gladly changed the law so that she, she'd be able to. Aladdin and Jasmine climbed aboard the magic carpet and kiss. Beneath them was a whole new world where they would live together happily ever after. The end.